Okay, we're dipping woodenware today. And uh, we're doing it here in the driveway. As you can see, we've got plenty to do. It's the kind of thing, it takes a long time to heat your wax up and you wanna have it all ready to do at once. And uh, it's a bit of a time investment, so be ready to spend a whole day or two doing it if you got a lot to do. Um, basically, I've welded myself up this tank here. It's uh, stainless steel. I folded it up in the brake, welded the seam. It's uh, basically the tank, the pedestal, and a skirt to keep the heat in around it. You can't see the two burners that are under there, but I have a dual burner system, and it runs off a standard propane tank. And uh, this will help heat our wax up to about 300 degrees. 325 is pushing it. You tend to cook your woodenware a little bit much, and it'll darken it. Three, 300 is a good number, I found. It, it, uh, it really works. And the idea is to cook the moisture out of your boxes, replace that. You'll see the wax will suck right back in, replacing that moisture with wax. And uh, I just, I am done painting woodenware. No more. So we've invested in some wax here. Um, lid's important uh, to keep the rain out of your wax. And uh, if, God forbid, you have a fire, you can just put the lid on it and sm smother it that way. You know how I feel about safety? Uh, fire extinguishers, just a good idea. Garden hose, not a good idea. We are working with open flame and combustible hydrocarbon here, so, um, you know, you want to use long sleeves, uh, eyeglasses, which I have, and uh, And the handiest of all, a nice pair of, uh, these are my welding gloves, but they work great and you're not going to be able to do it without them. Okay, so I got my gloves, got our eyeglasses, and uh, we're mostly covered. Never mind those sandals. It's 103 out here today. Uh, I don't know why we picked 103 to deal with hot wax today, but we did. Um, so our lid doubles is a drip tray. And uh, we've got this... Uh, mostly full of hot wax here um, now the wax we're going to use a lot of times you'll hear about a paraffin rosin mixture gum tar rosin uh, a lot of people use that I didn't find a good source what I did find was microcrystalline wax and paraffin wax uh, paraffins a, a, not to get too heavy on the science part it's a straight chain hydrocarbon the microcrystalline wax is a branch chain hydrocarbon and it has better adhesion properties, and it takes the place of the rosin in your mixture. Um, I found a great supplier, reasonable prices, and they pre-mix it in any way you want it. So this is 140 temperature uh, melt point paraffin and 180 microcrystalline melt point. And it comes in two forms. It comes in a slab, 11 pound slabs, like so, that you can uh, very carefully, since I already have 300 degree wax in here, we're just going to add to it. No splashing. And the other form it comes in, and this only really counts once uh, when you get it from the manufacturer, because obviously it's going to be a solid brick soon. Uh, it's pastille form, and I find it a little easier to deal with. And it's just little, uh, it's pelletized. and it tends to melt a little faster. Okay, so it's starting smoke, and uh, that's a good indication. We're getting right about that 300. Uh, flash point on this wax um, is about 450 degrees, so we're a little way away from the flash point. Uh, it's pretty hot though, but to be sure that we're at a safe temperature, we're going to put our trusty thermometer in. Compliments of Mark Antman. Thank you, Mark. Uh, and uh, see exactly what we've got here. Carefully. And... Okay. 300 it is. Beautiful. Okay, we're done with you. Okay, now I've... Uh, developed a bit of a strategy here where we can maximize the number of uh, pieces at once in here, which when you're doing a lot is important. So I put two together and one in the middle. Now be really careful not to splash. This is the dangerous part. Okay. 
Just lower them in nice and easy. Okay, and they're gonna wanna float. So I put an extra one on top. I put a lid on top of that. And I have this big heavy piece of metal here to hold the whole thing down. And we're gonna time it. We're gonna give it about 10 minutes. 15, you probably don't need to leave it more than 15 and uh, it'll start to darken your wood at 15 minutes. 10 is just fine and you'll get plenty of penetration. We'll pull them out and we'll uh, put them on the drip tray and we'll see what that looks like when that wax sucks back in in just a minute. All right, so one concern uh, with this whole thing is uh, it's gonna foam. You're displacing moisture that's in your wood and the more moisture that's in your wood, the more foam you're gonna have. So my wax level is here and I gave myself you know, a good foot for foam up and over, because if it comes up and over, then you have a flame uh, issue. So just know that this is going to foam a bit. So uh, if you're gonna build a tank, leave yourself some headroom. Okay, and we can see the foam kind of boiling out here. Now this wood is pretty dry. It's been inside so it's really not foaming so much, but uh, that's how you know it's right. You have good temperature and it's cooking the moisture out. And all that moisture gets replaced with that wax. Okay, 10 minute timer went off. Time to remove the boxes. So this is one of the more dangerous parts because uh, everything's hot, everything's wet. So you just want to be careful. Go slow. First things first. Here's where you appreciate the gloves. Okay, so this wood is 300 degrees. And uh, it's kind of neat. What you'll see here is the wax actually gets drawn right back into the wood as it starts to cool. Now, some people take this opportunity to paint. They say the paint adheres really well and only right now when they're still uh, hot. You can't paint over the wax. But um, if you're gonna paint, now's the time to do it. As uh, you can see the wax drawing into the wood as it cools. Okay, so this is one of the things about rosin and microcrystalline um, when you add those, those uh, to your paraffin mixture. Paraffin wax, if you use only that 140 melt point paraffin, it's going to leave your boxes when it's 100 degrees like this. It'll bleed out of them because it doesn't have that adhesion and it'll leave them slick. It'll leave them slippery. Uh, adding the microcrystalline wax adds that adhesive property and it's going to bind it into your wood. And you can see that they were ringing wet but it's, uh, it's actually drawing right into those pores. And uh, that's what we're looking for. All right, so that's the basic process. One, two, three, just uh, take your time, be safe. And uh, this stuff, it's, uh, it'll outlast a paint job all day long. It's uh, everything I've read says uh, an easy 10 years and, and perhaps 20 if you're a little bit kind to them. And, uh, and they'll be weatherproof and uh, should, uh, should last many, many good years of service for you. So good luck with your wax dipping. <laughs>